All right, good morning, everybody. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay, great. So just some quick introductions. We're going to get started here in just a few minutes. Um, my name is Jessica Callmaker. I am an admissions and records technician here at Saracoso. Um, and today we're going to go through our admissions application, just kind of go through a step-by-step -step process um, so everybody can kind of see how the application works um, and all of that. If I could also have my co-hosts um, introduce themselves as well, that way everybody knows who's here. So um, can you guys hear me okay? Thumbs up? Yes? Okay. <laughs> So my name is Fabian Manessas. I'm one of the educational advisors here at Saracoso. So I'll be assisting Jessica, just answering some um, general questions uh, during the application process. Um, but I'm glad you guys are all here. All righty. So just some, some quick housekeeping things. So like I said, we are going to be going through the application, just kind of going through step by step. Um, at the end of the presentation, we are going to do a Q&A. Um, so if you guys have questions, we also have staff on the line. Um, you can use the chat box or if you had emailed questions, um, we will be going through the questions afterwards. Um, so if you, again, if you guys think of anything, please feel free to submit the questions and um, we will go ahead and do those afterwards. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and get started. Is, every, is everybody able to see my screen? Um, it should be the Saracosa homepage. All right, <clears throat> perfect. So just real quick, so when you go to the Saracosa webpage, so saracosa.edu, um, this will get you on our landing page um, here. And, and one of the biggest things that you're going to see, or one of the, the things that's going to catch your eye, is this red apply now button in the upper left hand corner. Um, so once you go ahead and click on that, that's going to take us to our application page. Um, so just real quick before we actually get started on the application, just want to kind of show you around um, this particular page. So we do have um, we do have an introductory video that you can watch as well. It's about two and a half minutes long that kind of goes through the application process. Um, we have some frequently asked questions um, down here. You know, what if you accidentally X out of the application before finishing? Um, so we do have some uh, frequently asked questions down here. And then down at the bottom, we also have the contact information for CCC Apply, uh, which is the state uh, application program. And then also just real quick, um, right under here under new students, we do have an admissions application instructions. Um, it's actually uh, just a one page sheet that kind of helps walk you through the application. Um, it also gives you the opportunity to um, write down your passwords and usernames and email and things like that. Okay. So before, in order for us to get started, so when we're getting ready to start the application, um, the first thing you're, you're going to do is going to go ahead and click on the Saracoso application button. <clears throat> now our application is, is separated, um, kind of a, a two to three step process. Uh, one, the first step is to create an account on CCC Apply, um, which like I said is the state application. Once you create an account with CCC Apply, then you'll actually create the application and complete the application, and then the last step is getting your ID number and email address. Um, so we're just going to kind of go through the application as if we are a brand new student, um, so that way everybody can see how this process works. So we're going to go ahead and create an account. So one of the things that CCC Apply um, will tell you is you, you need to have an email address. It can be a Gmail, a Yahoo, Hotmail, Ymail, whatever email address that you use, um, as long as you have a personal email address, because they do send some things uh, to it. If you don't have one, you are welcome to use one of the services that they've provided to go ahead and set yourself up with an email account. Um, if you need to set an email up account just for this purpose, you're welcome to do so. Um, 
So I'm going to go ahead and begin creating my account. Um, for this purpose, I did create um, an email account that we're going to be that we'll be using just for this purpose. Um, so page one is just basic information, first name, middle name, last name. If you don't have a first name or if you don't have a middle name, you'll want to be sure to check the boxes. So we're just going to go ahead and so I don't have a middle name in this particular instance. If you have a suffix, you'll want to be sure to go ahead and include that here. If there's a maiden name or any other names that you've gone by, you can indicate either yes or no. Um, if you do click on yes, it will ask you to enter any information for previous names. I'm just going to go ahead and say no. And then if you have a preferred name that is different than your legal or previous name, you know, if you have a name that you prefer to go by, um, you can go ahead and enter that information here. I'm just going to go ahead and All right. Then, of course, we're going to go into our date of birth. Pretty much setting up this account is demographics information, um, name, address, email, that kind of information. So we're just going to go through here. Okay. So this next step is important. So it's talking about the social security number. Um, if you plan on applying for financial aid, um, the social security number is required. Um, it is required for admissions to the college as well as on financial aid applications. Um, so this just kind of goes into um, what the IRS information is looking for, the kind of the California Ed Code that talks about it. Um, now we do have students that don't have a social security number or don't have a tax ID number. That is something that we can definitely work with. Um, we have a way that we can actually work around the application without the social security number. Or if you have a social security number and you don't wish to use it, um, again, you can contact our office and we can actually walk you through the steps on how to obtain an alternate number. <clears throat> So once you read through here, um, you're going to indicate which, if you're going to use a social security number or a tax ID number. If you don't have one or you decline to provide one at this point in time, um, you'll actually check this box down here. Um, it also talks about, you know, if you, you know international student or a non-resident student. Um, you can indicate here if you're an international or non-resident or you just don't have a, a social security number. Um, for, this particular, for this particular application, we're just going to go ahead and go through the application is if we don't have a social security number, I'm declining to provide one. Um, if you have your social or tax ID, you'll enter it in these two boxes here. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and continue. All right, so page two is all about our, our contact information. So just real quick, we're going to be going through an email, phone number, address. Um, so we'll just go ahead and put our All right. Okay, and we're just going to go ahead and enter a good phone number in and then once you put in your your phone number here if you don't want text messages or um, any type of messages to come through through navigate or through the college you just want straight phone calls you can just uncheck that box if you do enter in a mobile number and you are okay with receiving text messages um, you can go ahead and leave that box checked if you have a second phone number or another form, an office number, or something that we, another way we can reach you, you are welcome to put that number here. Um, again, and if it's a mobile, you can check or uncheck if you would like to receive text messages. 
if you are using an office number that has an extension, you'll be able to go ahead and put your additional extension numbers in these boxes here. Okay, now our the address. Um, if you currently have an address that is outside the United States, you'll just go ahead and indicate that here. You'll confirm. Um, if no, we'll just go ahead and hit continue. If you don't have an address um, due to a housing insecurity or you're um, homeless, you'll want to be sure to go ahead and, and check that here. Again, it's going to go ahead and confirm um, that status. Okay, so for the purpose here, I'm just going to go ahead and use I'm just going to go ahead and use the main campus. And one thing that you'll want to note too, California is listed at the top of the box. Um, considering that this is a California application, um, they just try to make it a little bit easier for students uh, without having to scroll through the box. Now, if you do have a permanent address that is outside the state of California, you'll just want to go ahead and enter this correctly, how you have it set up. Um, outside the state. Jess, uh, yes. do you mind uh, mentioning if they have a PO box number, how to properly put that as well? Yes, um, thank you for mentioning that. So if you have a PO box number, the application does still require a permanent address. Um, as we get further into it, um, actually the next step we're going to it will give you the option to enter a, ma a different mailing address. So if you have a PO box, um, then we'll be able to enter that and the mailing address portion. Um, but at this point, it does ask for a permanent address. Now, again, too, if, um, if the student is considered homeless, uh, but you have a PO box, you'll just wanna make sure to select the I have no permanent address box, and then when we get to the the mailing portion, you'll be able to put in your PO box. All right. <clears throat> so the last step on creating our account is setting up our username and password. Now this username and password doesn't get you into the Saracoso systems, it just allows you to come in um, and use CCC Apply, um, which is the state uh, blanket application. What's great about this application too, so say, you know, you're attending Saracoso and you need to take a class at Antelope Valley College. Um, you can actually come back into this account and then complete an application through ABC using the same account. So you don't need to set all this up again for every college. You actually, it's one portal and you can actually apply to multiple institutions. Okay. So on our username here, so just note that you have a minimum of six characters. Um, you can use letters, numbers, or special characters on your password. And then two, when you click down to the next box, it'll tell you if the username is available. If it's not, they'll have some red lettering here that'll say, no, you can't use it. Um, it's already in use. So then you'll just need to either add on, take off, or do whatever you need to do for that. Okay, now our password has to be between seven and 20 characters um, with letters and at least one number. So we'll just go ahead and set up our password. And then if you guys decide that you are using the application's um, instructions that was on the website, there is a spot on the form that'll allow you to enter in your username, your passwords, that way you could just keep it safe um, and be able to access your accounts if needed. Okay, and then we're just gonna go ahead and create a four digit pin. Again, this is just for IDEX security when you're accessing the CCC Apply system. So if you ever forget your password or you forget your username, uh, you can go in with your PIN, your security questions. So this is all just ways that we can get back into the account. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and select 
your security question. Again, too, if you need to note your security questions and your answers, you'll want to go ahead and be sure to, to keep those just in case. Um, Let's see, of course, they give us all kinds of fun questions. So just you'll want to take some time to go through the questions. Um, you know, my rule of thumb is to is, you know, you see a question, the first answer you think of is the one that you you go with. All right. So then you'll just want to take a second. You'll just want to make sure that you know you have everything written down. You have the security questions that you would like, and then of course our infamous "I'm not a robot." Jessica, quick question: Are yes. the security answers uh, case sensitive? Yes, they are. Okay. Um, so you'll definitely want to make sure to note if you're keeping track of your security questions and answers to make sure you have things capitalized the way they need to be or how you need them to be. Thank you, Fabian. All right, so then we'll just go ahead and we're going to create our account. So on this page here, so it's going to tell you that our account is created. Our CCC ID, so this is this number here. So this is one that you're definitely going to want to go ahead and, and take note of, keep track of. Um, if you ever need to get into your application or, you know, if we accidentally close out before we finished, this number is, is important. Um, it's also something that we can use here in the admissions office to see where you're at in the application process. You know, if you've done the application but haven't activated, um, if you can provide this number, we can go into our report center and find your application to better assist you. Um, so that's one that you'll definitely want to go ahead and keep note of um, as well. So that's step one. So like I said, step one is creating that account. Um, the next step that, that we would actually be going to is actually completing the application itself. So we'll just go ahead and click continue. Okay, so this looks kind of scary, um, but it's really not. So right here we kind of have our status bars. As we go through the application, you'll see these little circles. When we've completed the component or the portion, you'll see these turn green. Um, so before we submit the application, we'll want to go through and double check to make sure that all of our questions are answered. If you need to move on to another, you know, you need to go back and check things, you can actually toggle back and forth between um, these components. All right. <clears throat> So the very first thing that it's going to ask us, it's going to ask us what term or semester that you plan on applying for. Right now, we are currently in the spring semester. Um, our spring semester be, begins in January and it ends mid-May. Uh, we do have some late start classes um, that usually go on that start in March and April. However, our next semester that will be happening is summer, so that will begin in mid-May. Um, some classes begin in June. It just depends on what class you're taking. And then we also have our fall applications. Um, so if you're a high school senior that's graduating, um, you know, you want to take a summer off and start in the fall. Um, so you'll just want to select the term that best fits your need. For this application, we're just going to go ahead and apply for fall. Okay, and the next question it's going to ask is our educational goal. So you're just going to want to go through this list here, um, and you're going to pick the one that is the closest to your goal that you have at this point in time. If you're not sure, or if you're just, you know, you're wanting to do, you know, get your two-year associate degree, and transfer. Um, you can transfer to a four-year institution to move on. 
if you're looking to just obtain an associate's degree without transferring, if you're looking into a career technical certificate, uh, welding, human services, uh, paralegal. So you'll just want to select the option that best suits your needs. You know, if you're just looking to take a couple classes to um, build up your job skills, you know, typing, office, PowerPoint, that kind of thing, or advance in your current career, again, you'll just want to select which um, option is best for you. Okay, <clears throat> now our intended major or program of study. Fabian, did you want to talk about the differences between our ed patterns? Yes. So if somebody is looking into, if you're actually looking into completing uh, an associate's degree or certificate program, um, it may be listed here. Um, there's some majors like engineering or uh, that are not listed here, but we house them under our general science or even liberal arts, math and science. Um, so this question sometimes is a little tricky for some people just because they're not sure what to click on. Um, what I would recommend is clicking the one that lines up uh, as close as it can to your career and educational goal. Uh, just be mindful that we could always switch your major. That's, that's very easy to do. It's a petition process and something we take care of on our end. So we're well aware that um, majors change, priorities change, um, you know, educational and career opportunities change. So what I would recommend is also just selecting uh, the one that's most appropriate. Um, if you are interested in completing a program but you're unsure of what to study, um, we get this a lot with our high school students. Um, what I usually advise them to do is select liberal arts, uh, either arts and humanities, math and science, social behavior, um, and then we could build around um, their career and educational goals around the appropriate major if we need to switch it down the line. Um, if What I would recommend is also having a split screen and heading over to our website to saracosa.edu and clicking on programs and classes, um, degrees and certificates. And you can see a roster of the items we offer here. Um, this would be good to kind of reflect back and see, don't take too long, but maybe vet out some of your options here. Um, you're more than welcome to give us a call here at the counseling department um, at 760-384-6219. Um, to ask us any questions you may have. Um. Thank you. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and we're going to take actually take Fabian's advice here and we're just going to go ahead and select um, a liberal arts degree. Again, like Fabian said, you're just going to want to go ahead and, and pick something um, that's close to what you're looking for. Or again you, again, you can go back through our website, take a look at all of the degrees and certificates we currently offer. Um, if you're looking into child development, um, we do have our certificates listed as well as the degree. And then these little bubbles here will actually tell you what campus um, they are offered. Can I all add right. to that real quick, Jessica? Yes. Um, if you click on the intended majors program of study right here on the application page, You'll notice right next to the ending of the title, it says CC General Education Pattern, CSU GE, and then I get CGE. Uh, real quick, the difference between all three educational patterns is CC General Education Pattern is for individuals who are looking to just complete their associate's degree. Um, they're not planning to transfer. Um, in most cases, this would be someone that's doing a welding uh, associate's degree or paralegal or um, something along those lines. Um, for the CSU general education pattern, just as much as the, as the title hints, you're preparing to head over to the Cal State system. So Cal State Bakersfield, um, Cal State San Bernardino, I mean, there's 23 to choose from. So if you know that maybe the major that you want is at Cal State uh, so-and-so, then definitely selecting that as the educational pattern. And then the third option, which is the I get C general education pattern, 
this is for individuals who are looking into transferring to either the CSU system or heading over to the UC system. This would also be a really good pattern um, if you're planning to go out of state, if you're looking into an online school, um, or, just, or just unsure of what your options may be down the line, I would suggest selecting a GETC. Um, so you could give yourself a array of options to choose from. Um, and again, we could always change your major to reflect your career and educational goals, but for the means of this application, would be selecting the most appropriate one that fits best. Perfect. <clears throat> Thank you, Fabian. All right, so once we have selected our term, our educational goal, and our intended major or program of study, um, you can either click save or you can actually go on to hit continue. As you're going through the application, um, it should auto save on your steps. Okay, so again, just to kind of touch here. So now that we've answered all the questions for enrollment, it does turn into a little green check mark. Um, and now we're moving on to our account information. Now, if you need to go back, you say, you know what? You know, well, liberal arts just doesn't sound right. Or I, I really think I'm gonna go for administration of justice. You can actually go back to the enrollment tab and then you can go ahead and, and modify your answers how you need um, to modify. Um, for this instance, I'm going to go ahead and keep my liberal arts degree here. All right. So from our account information, so, you know, if something has changed since you created your account, um, you can either review your account information, which was that first step that we did, or if everything, you know, if everything is, is good to go, this this is also the opportunity that you'll be able to add or enter in your mailing address. So if you indicated that you're homeless on the first component of the application and didn't provide a permanent address, um, this is where you have the opportunity to either, you know, if your mailing address is the same, if you have an address outside the United States, or if you have a PO box, um, you'll be able to enter that information here. I'm just going to go ahead and, and use the same here. So you could either select, you know, my address is the same, and it'll close it up. If not, then you can go through and enter in your mailing address. And one thing to note too, if you are in an apartment um, or you have a space, apartment, or building number, be sure to include that here. Um, that way, you know, if the college mails things to, we want to make sure that it gets to you um, and not have to be sent back. You know, this is important to, you know, when you receive a degree, a certificate, or an award, we want to make sure that you're able to get those um, on time without them being delayed. Okay, so now, again, we're getting all of our little green check marks. And now we're going to, it's going to ask about your education. You know, if you've taken college classes elsewhere, um, if you graduated high school, if you're still in high school, um, if you are currently in a GED program, whatever your situation might be, this is the place that it's going to ask you about all of your past um, education experience. So one thing to note here too, since we're doing a fall 2020 application, they the application wants to know as of August 21st, 2020, what's going to be your status? So our options are we have first time student in college after leaving high school, first time at this college but attended another college, or you're a returning student and you're been absent for a main term or semester. So, you know, if you attended here, you know, say back in 2003 and you're coming back, um, you'll want to go ahead and select this option as well. But for our sake, um, we're just going to say that we're a first time student in college after leaving high school. And then it's going to ask us about our high school education level. Again, this level is as of August 21st of this year. Um, so if you're currently a high school senior um, that's graduating, you'll want to make sure to indicate what your status is. Um, 
So we have, you know, received a high school diploma from a U.S. school, the equivalent, if you passed a high school equivalency, or received the certificate of equivalency, um, if you attended, if you lived abroad and attended a foreign high school and you have a certificate of completion from the foreign high school, if you're currently enrolled in adult school, or if you're not a graduate or no longer enrolled in high school. So you'll just want to select which option is best related to your situation. Um, so if you have a high school diploma from a U.S. school, it's going to ask you your month, day, and year of graduation. If you don't remember your graduation down to the day, you know, like myself, I graduated 12 years ago, so I don't necessarily remember the day that I graduated. Um, you know, it's a busy time. So you can just want to select, you know, most close to what, when you completed. So most high schools typically complete, you know, end of May, beginning of June. Um, so you'll just want to select, you know, you can do June 1st, or if you remember the day, um, then you'll go ahead and put the day in the year. Now, two, you know, if you received, you know, the high school proficiency exam, um, you'll want to go ahead and again, put your completion date. It's going to ask you if you attended high school in California for three or more years, um, which we'll get to that piece in just a second. Um, if you're currently enrolled in adult school, then that's all you need to, to input. Um, if you're not a graduate or no longer enrolled in high school, that's the only option that you need to select. You don't need to enter in additional information. Jessica, can we yes. go back to the receive high school diploma uh, from a U.S. school? And then I think there is a question of a, being a homeschool student. Mm -hmm. Can you reflect on that for a bit? Yes. So if you are a homeschool student, um, particularly a homeschool student in the state of California, typically, you know, homeschools are a part of a state charter or a state organization through the Department of Education. Um, so you should, and if you have received a high school diploma from a homeschool, you'll still select this option. Um, you know, if you're a homeschool, again, as long as you know, either they're a part of the charter or you have your affidavits submitted to the Department of Ed. Um, as long as the homeschool is considered um, in an actual homeschool, then you'll go ahead and select this option. You'll enter in your completion, um, just as if you would a normal or a traditional high school. Okay. So here on this question, it's going to ask you if you've received your diploma, your GED, or a certificate in California. If you select no, okay, that's that's completely fine. You know, we have, you know, there's a lot of students that, you know, they maybe grew up out of state, attended high school out of state, not a problem. And then here on this question, have you attended high school in California for three or more years? Um, you'll want to be sure to answer this truthfully. Um, this does go into consideration for any residency. You know, if you're new to the state of California, or, you know, again, if you attended California you know, high school outside of California for three or more years, you'll just want to be sure to answer this correctly too. Okay, so the next step too is the last high school attended. Um, so this is the opportunity for our homeschool students to be able to indicate, you know, you were registered in a homeschool in an organization. Again, typically your homeschools, and this is something that you may know or your administrators may know, um, if you are registered as part of a charter, um, like the Inspire Charters, um, Opportunities for Learning, or, you know, if you had an affidavit through the state of California's Department of Education, that's something if you're not sure, you'll want to be sure to ask um, on that question. So if that's the situation, then you'll just go ahead and put your state in the country in which you received your education. Again, just note to California is at the top of the list. And then you're going to enter the name. Um, or city of the high school or the organization, and then they should be listed on the list. If they're not, let's see. 
So say, you know, you're attending Inspire Charter. Um, so it does have a list of schools that you'll be able to select from. If your school is not on the list, you'll just go ahead and select my school is not on the list. It's going to ask you to type it in, and it's going to ask you the city in which um, that school was located. And then if you're independently homeschooled, like if you didn't go through the homeschool charter um, or the state of California, you can go ahead and select here. If you did not attend high school and you were not homeschooled, you'll just go ahead and select here. Um, and then finally, if you did attend high school, you'll pretty much go through the same process like the homeschool. You'll select your country, your state. Um, we'll just go ahead and... Now, for anybody that's on that attended boroughs, um, while the formal name, you know, starts with Sherman E. Burroughs, that through this application, it is considered Burroughs High uh, in Ridgecrest. So that's something that kind of throws people off. Um, a little bit. So you could just type in the word Burroughs, or if you attended Mesquite, you could just type in the name and it should pop up on the list. Again, if your school's not on the list, you'll want to be sure to select the option that school's not listed and then go through and manually type in the name in the in the city. Okay. <clears throat> Right. So now we're going to come into our citizenship and military status. Um, under citizenship, uh, you do have the options for U.S. citizen, permanent resident, temporary resident, a refugee. If you're an international student that is that has an F1 or M1 visa, you'll go ahead and select. If your citizenship status is none of these selected options, you'll just go ahead and select other. If you are a visa holder, you'll go ahead and select which particular visa um, you have. Again, if it's not listed here, um, you can select other and it will ask you to type it in. Um, so this is just the list of all the visas that they have. If um, you do have an other citizenship status and you don't have documents, you'll just go ahead and select the no documents piece here. Now, if you do have a visa, again, you'll go ahead and select off the list. It's gonna ask you the date your visa was issued, the expiration date. If your visa does not have an expiration date, you'll just need to go ahead and select uh, the appropriate box. Okay, if you are an international student with an F1, M1 visa, you'll just be sure to go ahead and enter all of your visa information here. If you are a refugee, you'll go ahead and enter in your alien registration number. Temporary resident is the same. If you are a permanent resident, um, you'll just go ahead again and put in your alien registration number. And then if you are a U.S. citizen, you'll go ahead and select that option. Hey, Jessica, quick question. If uh, you're a dreamer, what would you select? So if you are a dreamer student, um, typically, and if none of these pertain to your status, you'll go ahead and select other. Um, if the student doesn't have any documentation, um, again, you'll just want to select the no documents option. And once, once the college receives your application, um, then the admissions and records department will work with the student um, in regards to residency status to see if you're eligible for California state residency. The financial aid department can assist um, with doing you know, the dream application. Um, basically at that point, then the offices can actually work with you, the individual student, on completing and getting registered for classes. Good question, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and, so again, in citizenship, and then too, if a student has questions about their citizenship status, or if they have questions such as that one, you know, I'm a dreamer, um, 
please feel free to call the office um, or send us an email and our technicians are happy to help answer any questions that you might have um, and kind of what the process and the steps are. Um, if the student is not a citizen or doesn't meet any of these on the list. Um, and we'll be sure to include all of our contact information at the end as well. Um, so that way, if you guys have questions, you'll be able to contact us. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go through um, if a student is active duty military, a veteran, um, reserves, National Guard, or if you're a parent or spouse um, of anybody in the military. So you'll just go through the list here and you're going to select which option um, applies to you. If none apply, then you'll just go ahead and, and select none apply. Um, if you're currently serving on active duty, if you're a military, or excuse me, a veteran, active reserves, National Guard, you'll go ahead and select your options here. Um, if your parent, your guardian, or your spouse is an active duty military member, a veteran, um, reserves, National Guard, you can go ahead and select your option here. Um, and this is just for, um, for information too. Um, you know, our military members and our veterans have additional support and funding. So this is just some information. Um, you know, if you are military or a veteran, you can enter in your date of discharge, you know, legal residence, home of record, um, all of that here. If this, if none of these apply to you, you just go ahead and hit none apply to me and you move on. So again, too, if your parent or your spouse is active duty, you'll select, depending on the option that you select, will depend on the additional questions that you'll need to answer. All right, go ahead and hit continue. All right, so our little green check marks are, we're getting through there, we're about halfway through the application. Um, to, at this point, we're going, because we're going through piece by piece, um, it's taking us a little bit longer. But typically, a student can complete the application in about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, so on this portion, we're going to talk about residency. Um, so this, we start off in our very first question, have you lived in California since August 21st of 2018. If you have lived here all of your life, you've never left, um, you'll go ahead and, or if you've just, if you've lived in the state since before August of 2018, you'll go ahead and, and select yes. If you are new to California or you moved to California after that date, um, you'll go ahead and select no. And then it's going to ask you, when your current stay in California began. Um, so if you were in California, you moved back to another state and then came back and moved again and came back, you'll want to indicate the date on when your current stay in California began. Um, if you don't know the exact date, that is completely fine. You'll just go ahead and indicate which month, approximate date, um, and then the year that you moved here. If you are currently living out of state um, and you're planning, you know, you're not here in California, you'll go ahead and select the box um, that says that you have not arrived in California. Or if you're living out of state and you don't plan on relocating to California, you'll go ahead and select that box. Okay, so one of the things too, if there is an error on the application, the application will notify you. Um, so here it says, you know, we found some problems, you know, you need to indicate a date. So this will stop you, um, to tr and it'll try to catch your attention before we move on. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and go there. So it's going to ask about any out-of-state activities, you know, since, you know, as of August 21st, 2018, have you engaged in the following? If you paid taxes outside California, registered to vote out, outside of the state, declared residency at a college or university out of state, or filed a lawsuit, 
or divorce. If none of these pertain to you, just leave them blank. Um, if any of these options do pertain to you, you'll just want to go ahead and select which option um, pertains to your situation. Then we go into some special residency categories. Um, for any student that may have been in the foster care system, um, if you're not sure, because I know some situations are different, um, if you're not too sure, through the application you will see um, links like this here. And if you just click on it to the right hand side, you'll see kind of an explanation of what court ordered foster care is, the definition. Um, that way, you know, you can see if this pertains to your particular situation. Um, of course, so just some information here, if there's any contact information or if you have questions about it, um, they do provide a number as well as a website uh, or email that you can communicate with them if you're not sure. And you'll see this um, through the application in a few different places. So in this case, if this does pertain to you, um, you'll just go ahead and select yes. It's going to ask, you know, when did you exit foster care? Again, if you're not sure on how they're defining that, you can go ahead and select there and it will give you um, a brief explanation on, on what that means. You know, if there was an adoption, reunification, emancipation, um, and then if you're not sure what your status may be, then of course you can call or email them and they will um, work with you on that. So if that is the situation, then you'll just go ahead and um, if select which option pertains to you if you're still currently in foster care, um, if you've exited the foster care system, you're not sure, um, you'll just go ahead and select which option best applies. If you have not been in court ordered foster care, you'll just go ahead and select no, and then we'll just go ahead and move on. Again, down here, if you would like to save the form each time you're done, you are welcome to do so. You'll see this little box here that says it was saved. And then one thing to here, you'll actually see that we're still on the residency page, so we still haven't received that green check mark yet. But once we hit continue, again, you'll see that your stuff's been successfully saved, and now we have a green little check box. Okay, so now we're moving into our needs and interests. Um, it asks, you know, are you comfortable reading and writing in English? If you have selected yes, there's nothing else for us to do. If you select no, again, there's nothing else that you'll need to uh, fill in at this point. However, when you are working with our offices, if you need um, documents or, you know, if, you, if you're a Spanish speaker, you know, we do have staff that can help um, assist with that. Okay, and our financial assistance box. So this is just going to ask if you're interested in receiving information about money for college. Um, if you select no, there's nothing else that you need to do. If you select yes, that's great because then we can move on um, and talk about, you know, the financial aid, how that works, if you're a veteran using veterans benefits, the promise scholarship, anything along those lines, we can work with you on that. It's going to ask if you're receiving any TANF, CalWORKs, SSI, or general assistance. Typically, these are uh, state and federal benefits. So if you are receiving these benefits, you can just select yes or no. All right. Then our athletic interest. So here at Saracosa, we do, here at the main campus in Richcrest, we do have um, athletics. If you are interested in playing a sport on an intercollegiate team, you can go ahead and select here. If you're not sure what an intercollegiate team means, again, here's a link, um, and it will explain what that is. Um, can I add for something real quick? Um, yes. So we do offer women's um, softball and volleyball and soccer, and then we do offer men's uh, baseball and basketball. Um, so if you're interested in any of those sports, um, just select yes, I am interested, and hopefully we'll be following up with you. Perfect. Thank you, Fabian. Um, so again, you'll just go ahead and select your option. 
Um, if you're not interested in playing a sport, um, then you'll just go ahead and select here. In some instances, you know, we do offer some physical education classes. Um, so if those are the only things you're looking for, you'll just go ahead and select no. Okay, and this is our a list of um, some of our programs and services that we offer here. Um, and just note that not all college campuses offer every program on this list. However, here at the main campus, um, we do offer um, or at least have information for these resources. Um, so you'll actually go through this list, you know, if you're interested in you know, academic counseling, CalWORKs, EOPS, um, if you're a veteran interested in veteran services, tutoring, you'll just go through here um, and go through the list to see which ones you are um, interested in. And I believe we actually have some staff from these other offices. Um, so if anybody from Access wants to hop on and kind of explain Access real quick, um, that way students can have a better understanding of the program. Hi, I'm from Access Programs, and so we have some, a couple programs within Access, and we have EOPS, and that is for students who, uh, you have to be enrolled in at least 12 units, you have to be a California resident, you have to demonstrate financial need through financial aid, and then some other requirements. For CalWORKs, which is next right there, yeah. You have to be 18 years or older in good academic standing and receive AFDC or TANF. Okay, for child care, um, we actually offer um, services through CARE as well, which is um, under EOPS for CARE to be, um, the qualifications is to be on AFDC and to have a passport to services. You have to be a single parent, head of household, and have one child under the years old of 18. And then we have CalWORKs. Oh, sorry, I already said CalWORKs. <laughs> <laughs> we have Next Step, which is for foster youth. So that is for current or former foster youth who were in care on and or after your 16th birthday. Okay, and then we have DSPS um, for students who have a verifiable disability and you just request a service. You do not have to be on EOPS for DSPS, but for the rest of the programs, you do have to. And Erica, can I add to that real quick? Yes. So for DSPS students, if you or your student, um, or I'm sorry, you or your child had an IEP in high school, um, and would need or needed accommodations made uh, while they were in high school or even in middle school, um, we could look into uh, providing uh, similar or uh, above and beyond services with a DSPS. So I would highly suggest selecting DSPS um, and let us do the vetting out for you. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Erica, myself, or um, the AXIS programs. Um, they could be reached at 760-384-6250. Yes, thank you, Fabian, and I think that's all I have, too. Perfect. Thank you so much, Fabian and Erica. Um, so Can I add a little bit more? Sure, of course. <laughs> so if you scroll up to the very top of this list, what I always advise my students is select as many as you find interesting. Um, a lot of the times we don't think we're going to need career planning, but eventually the conversation will bring up. So select as many as you think uh, are pertain to you. Um, if you uh, have questions regarding any of these items, feel free to give us a call here at the counseling department or even access programs um, and select as many as, as you see fit. Um, but most of this information will get review through the orientation, um, the online orientation, um, and we'll talk about that detail probably on the Thursday's uh, web uh, workshop. Perfect, thank you so much, Fabian. Um, so again, like Fabian said, check which programs you're interested in. You know, if you're interested in all of them, select them all. Um, if you have just specific ones, um, you'll just go ahead and do that. All right, we'll hit continue. 
Okay, so this is just some demographics information. Um, as you can see here, we're almost done. You guys have stuck it out. Um, so we're just, we're almost there. So we just have a few more questions that we need to get through. Um, for this particular question here, it's going to ask um, about gender. If you're not sure how gender identity or gender expression is being identified, again, we have some links here. Um, that will explain um, or define the definition. Um, and you'll just kind of, you'll just go through here, um, select your gender. If you don't wish to share, select your gender, um, you can, you know, declare decline to state or you can select um, from the list. Uh, if you are a transgender student, uh, it will ask if yes or no, or you can decline to state, whatever um, is most comfortable. And then this is just giving us some information here. Um, again, this information is used for state and federal reporting purposes. It is optional and voluntary, um, and is not to be used in any way, shape, or form for a discriminatory purpose. Um, this talks about in California law, again, collecting voluntary demographic information. If this is something that you don't wish to share, um, please feel comfortable to you know, select decline to state um, at that point. Um, Again, the, of course, all the responses are kept private and secure, and it is 100% optional. Okay, so then we just move into your parent and guardian educational levels. Um, if you're, you know, you're, you're needing some assistance in defining the role of the parent or the guardian or the person who raised you, um, we have these links here, and again, it does define what that um, is. Uh, so you'll just go through, go through and select if you're not sure or, you know, you didn't have a parent or a guardian um, to raise you, you'll just select your options here. Um, if you know your parent or guardian's high, high school or education completion level, you just go ahead and, and um, go through the list and select which pertains to you. And it doesn't matter, you know, um, which parent is which. So if you want to use um, mom as guardian one, dad as guardian two, or vice versa, um, this is not specific to which parental role. And then we go into our race and ethnicity um, questions. So you'll just go through um, and select which pertains to you. And then um, one of the great things about this particular application, um, so when you do select your options, if there is um, something that's, we actually have more specific options and you can check as many, as few, whatever you would like to identify as with your heritage, um, you can actually go through the list. Um, now this list, they, the state tries to stay up to date and current with it. Um, so this is quite an extensive list um, to go through. So of course, you'll just go ahead and select which pertains to you. Um, and you can, if you choose to go through and select a, per, you know, a bit more detailed of one, you're welcome to do that. Um, if not, you can just leave it. And we'll just go ahead and continue. We're almost there, our last, our almost last little bubble. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and move into some supplemental questions. Um, it's gonna ask you if you currently receive any types of assistance that are below, um, if you're receiving CalFresh, general assistance, Medi-Cal or Medicaid, um, SSI, SDI, anything, um, you can go ahead and select here. If you're not receiving any of these benefits, you don't need to check anything. Um, you can just leave them blank. Jessica, for that question, um, if your parent or someone you live with is receiving some of these, do you still check them off? Uh, great question. Typically, if you are listed as, um, if you're on the case, then yes, you'll want to go ahead and select this. If you're not on that person's case, I would not check it. Um, or if you have your own case, you'll go ahead and select which ones pertain to you. Um, if not, then I would just leave them blank. 
Okay. So on our next question, it's going to ask you if you're a displaced homemaker. Um, the definition, this one actually should have a link here. Um, a displaced homemaker is <clears throat> One of the common examples that we see is, you know, if you're a stay-at-home parent and you're having, due to certain circumstances, you're having to return to the workforce um, and you're needing to brush up on skills to um, go back into the workforce, that is considered um, a displaced homemaker. Um, so, you know, sudden life changes and you're having to leave the home to go and work and provide for the family then um, you'll want to select yes. If that does not pertain to you, um, you'll just go ahead and select no. And then it's going to ask if you're enrolled in adult school. Um, if you are a high school senior that's graduating, um, you will not select this option. If you are currently enrolled in adult school, um, then you'll just want to go ahead and select yes or no. And then, of course, um, if you are a single parent, um, yes or no. Okay, so this is, we're getting close to the end here. Um, at this point, it's going to give you the option to review your responses through the entire application. Um, you can, you know, if you wanted to download and save your application as a PDF, uh, you can click here and, and do that. Um, if you just want to go ahead and review your application, you can actually select here. And it's going to, so here's our first box here for enrollment. In our answers that we provided, um, our name, address, if you have a preferred name or previous name, that'll be here, phone number, email. Um, again, so every answer that we have gone through will show up here. All of our residency, our needs and interests, it will, you know, if you selected no on athletics, that'll be here. If you wanted services that you're interested in, all those check boxes will show here our demographics information, and all those supplemental questions. Um, so if everything looks good, great. Now if you notice something, um, like maybe in the programs and services you clicked on something that you didn't mean to, and you want to go back in and change it, uh, you, all you have to do is just come up here on the left-hand side and select which, you know, if you want to change your needs and interests, you can actually come right back to where you were. Um, and you can go through, you know, I didn't mean to select child care. Um, and you can make your change, hit save, and then you just go ahead and go through and continue. Back to, so one thing that you'll notice too, because we're back on the demographics page, um, our little green check mark um, did come back to the yellow. That's just because we are back on the page. And if we're making changes, we can make changes. Um, whatever you need to do. And if there's no changes to make, you just go ahead and continue on. And it'll go right back to uh, the green check mark. All right. <clears throat> so again, so you can actually go ahead and, like I said, review your application. If everything looks great, um, you can go ahead and select hide my application. That way you don't have to scroll through everything. Now, a request for consent to release information. Um, so in higher education or at the college level, we do not give out information, personal information, um, without written consent from the individual. Um, just kind of like when you, know, when you go to the doctor's office or the hospital where they have HIPAA, we abide by FERPA regulations. Um, and this goes to for any high school students, um, if you're a concurrent high school student that's taking classes with us, we view you as a college student, um, and we do not give out information to your parents. Um, even if you're a minor, we do follow FERPA regulations for higher education. Um, so without written consent, we don't say anything. Uh, this particular information here is in regards to the state chancellor's office. Um, the state chancellor's office, um, we do report to the state chancellor's office. Um, they may ask for data, you know, how many students that live in this area do we serve? Um, so this is just going through, like I said, you can go through and read through it. 
um, and if you allow us to include your information, um, typically we don't ever report out names or anything like that. It's just, you know, if you're living in Mammoth, you know, they want to know how many students are living in Mammoth, then your data would be included. Um, so you can either consent or do not consent. It is absolutely 100% completely up to you on if you want your data to be included. All right, so one of our last boxes here is getting ready to submit the application. One thing that we want to make sure to note um, is once the application is submitted, you cannot come back into the application and make changes. Um, so that's part of the whole, you know, review your application before we submit, make your corrections or changes, um, because once we hit submit, it's there. Now that's not to say, you know, like, you know, if you decide to change your major, that's something that we can definitely do. Uh, you just won't be able to come back into this component to change anything. <clears throat> All right, so again, so it just kind of puts in some regulations from the state of California. Um, by checking this box, you're indicating that all the information in the application pertains to you. Um, you're not falsifying information or um, in your understanding the materials and information submitted um, is for the purpose of admission. Again, here, you're checking here that um, you're aware that federal and state financial aid programs are available. You can apply for financial assistance. Um, financial aid program information is available to you, and we can and touch on that as well um, for those that may have questions about financial aid. And then once these two boxes are checked, when we're ready, all we do is hit submit my application. All right, so then we come through here. Well, this would have your name. Um, so that's our application, but we are not done yet. Um, this is just information too that you'll want to keep um, on hand if you if you like to keep information just in case here's our confirmation ID number um, and one of the things too actually so in your email um, when you are doing your application um, when you've created your account when you check your email you'll actually be receiving emails throughout the process um, so you know this particular email is you know we successfully created our account on CCC apply or open CCC um, so this is something, too, that you can always keep in your files as well. Um, now, for example, if you pause in the middle of the application, um, you know, if you're stuck on the demographics and you, you have to go do something else and you come back to the application, um, you can pick up right where you left off. If your application, um, you know, if you, if you log off on it and you're gone for a few days, you may see an email come through that says, hey, your application's still pending, you know, log back in and finish it, you will get reminders um, for it. And that's one of the great things about CCC Apply. And then, of course, you'll start getting some emails from the Kern Community College District. Um, for those that don't know, Saracoso um, is in this particular college district, there's actually three colleges um, in the district. It's Saracoso, uh, Bakersfield College, and Porterville. Um, so all three colleges are in our one district. Um, so some of the emails that you see come through will show current community college district. Uh, don't be alarmed, it's not fake, it, it, it is us. Um, and so one of the things, you'll, you'll start getting some emails from here. This one is just stating um, your application has been received. And then we have our, our next step is activation. Now, if you ask, you know, if you close out of the application, um, so this is where we're currently at. If, if you close out of it and you need to get back into it, you can come into this email and actually select activation um, and it will take us to the next step. But since we're still on this page, we can actually um, go through, there's just some quick little tips here, this is some. Uh, this is actually our admissions information, our phone number, um, our fax number, our website. And then, if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we actually will hit continue. 
And this is just some information now that you've applied. Um, it just gives us some extra steps. Now, because this is a state ran application, we're not able to make changes to it. If I could, I would actually move this step over here because um, our next and last step is to create our college account. Um, they do offer a survey, some links and opportunities, but for the sake of getting our ID number and email address, we're actually going to go to create your college account. Perfect. Can I add so this, something real quick? Uh, yes. So if you guys notice right before she clicked continue, there was a bar that was loading. Um, in some cases, what I would recommend if you're using Chrome or Firefox, don't refresh the page. Just kind of let it do its thing. What it's doing, it's pulling all that information that you submitted via CCC apply and your Syracuse application to uh, issue you a student ID and email. Um, so just, again, don't refresh the page because it's going to take, I guess, like longer than it needs to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Sure. Um, um, so what happens, like sometimes they would go like to the black hole, I guess is what we would call it, is they wouldn't get the email or the activation code. And a lot of times they would be selected for further review. In this case, would we just contact the office as usual? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. So, you know, if you clicked out of there, you can't find your activation email, um, which is this particular email. If you can't find it, sometimes it goes to your junk folder. So check your junk folder. If you don't see it, you cannot find it. Um, definitely contact the admissions and records department. We can find your application um, and we can actually either A, send you an email that has all of the activation instructions. Um, that way you can actually go in and, and complete the activation component. Um, or if you're, you know, whatever the case may be, we can actually find the application and see where you're at and be able to assist. <clears throat> Okay, so just moving into the activation component. Um, so you should see all of your information here, um, first and last name, the email address that you used to apply, your address, um, and things here. Now at the beginning of the application, I had indicated that I did not have a social security number or I didn't want to provide one. Um, at this point in time, if you do not have a social security number or a tax ID number, please contact the admissions and records department and we can actually work with you on getting a temporary number um, to use in the place here. Um, if you did enter your social security number or a tax ID number at the beginning of the application, th this particular box won't be here. Um, but because I did indicate that I didn't have one or didn't want to provide one, um, this particular step does need something in this box. Um, so please contact admissions and records and our technicians can work with you and provide this number for you so that way um, you can finish your application. So I'm just going to go ahead. This is actually one of the temporary numbers um, that we would give you if you don't have a social security number. Um, it's just, again, it's basically like a faux SSN to use in this box. So once we go ahead and put that in, so then we go into our college email address. Um, so our college email format is typically first name, dot last name, a set of four numbers at email.saracoso.edu. Um, so in this box, you're just gonna select any four numbers you want. If you wanna do one, two, three, four, zero, 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 your birth year, the last four of your um, Can I, phone uh... number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For most of my students that I do outreach, um, do not use your uh, zip, or I'm sorry, do, do not use your address, the last four of your social. Uh, mm -hmm. What I would recommend is using four numbers that are not associated with your identity, um, just so that uh, it's much easier not to figure out your passwords um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for security purposes. So uh, just something to be mindful about. Yes, thank you. Um, 
Yeah, so once you put your four numbers in here, you'll see what your email address is going to look like. Um, you know, if you have a, a common name like John Smith um, and you do one, two, three, four, if we already have an email like that in the system, it will tell you that the email address is not available and you'll just need to select something different. Um, so again, whatever number you wish, uh, with the exception of the last four of your social, um, again, for security purposes. So your, it, it would show, instead of saying admissions, it would be your um, first name? Correct. Yeah, so it'll have our first name. So I, in this application, I did my first name is admissions, my last name is test. Um, so first name, dot last name, are four numbers, at email dot saracoso dot edu. One thing that you'll want to note here is we have one, two, three periods in the email address. Um, so you'll definitely want to make sure um, if you're writing it down, you'll want to write it down correctly because otherwise it will lock you out of the system if it's not correct. All right. And then we're just going to go ahead and create and confirm our password. Um, so one quick thing that I'd like to note here too, so here's your Saracoso email address and your password. These are extremely important. Um, as you sign into the Saracoso system with your email and password. Um, so these particular password and email combinations are absolutely important and vital. So you'll want to make sure to um, write them down, take a picture of it uh, with your phone, however you need to keep your records. Um, you'll want to make sure to keep it all safe. Yeah, while Jessica types out her password, um, one uh, thing that I learned is if you save it as a contact, your student email, student ID number, and your password on your phone, or put it in your notes on your phone, on your cell phone, it's much easier to look for rather than scrolling through screenshots or trying to find an old email deep in your, uh, in your inbox. So. A good tactic to to use while while you're in college but also remembering those numbers mm -hmm. um, so when you're creating your password it does tell you it does need to be between 8 and 20 characters long um, it must contain letters and numbers and it is case sensitive so if you have a capital letter at the first um, the first item you'll definitely want to make sure all your capitalization is correct um, it does not contain special characters such as an exclamation point, a dash, space, anything along those lines. And then uh, your password cannot have a character sequence such as one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D, or um, a sequence of the same numbers. So no A, 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 five, 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 five. It has to be, um, and then of course it will shine or light up green when your password is valid. And when you go in to confirm your password, um, it, they will both light up green when you're all set. Um, if you would like to show your password, um, you're welcome to click this box and then you can actually see what you're typing in. Um, all right, and then our account recovery. So this is a security question and answer for Saracoso. Um, these security questions aren't the same as your CCC apply. This is specific to Saracoso in our systems. Um, so you'll just go through, we again, we have a list of, of na names, a list of questions here that you'll select um, that you can choose from, and then your security answer. Again, case sensitive. Um, so if this is two separate words, you'll wanna make sure that you have your two separate words listed. And then one thing here, this is our personal email address that we use to set up the application. So this is something that you can't change, um, but it is your basically a recovery email address. So if something happens and you need to get into it, um, an email can be sent to that Gmail or whatever email you have um, set up. And then our last step here is our verification. Um, again, one thing here is no changes can be made once it's submitted. So, you know, if you chose the wrong four numbers, um, you know, you, again, you'll just want to make sure that everything is set up the way you want it to be set up. Um, 
Now, of course, there are steps to go through, you know, if you forget your password or you need to change your password, we do have um, a process to go through and do that. Um, so it's just something you want to check, you know, make sure, you know, make sure your social security number is entered correctly, um, your email is entered incorrectly, uh, those kinds of things. And then you'll just go through, you know, all the information pertains to me, everything that I've answered is true and correct, um, not falsifying information. I'm agreeing to the district's computer and network use policy. Um, if you want to read that, you're welcome to click the link. It'll direct you to the network use policy um, if you wanted to read through that. If not, you'll just go through and check all the boxes, and then you will hit submit. All right. So now your acceptance to Saracoso is complete. You have been admitted as a student. Um, this is your student ID. Well, this would be your student ID number um, in our system. And one thing you'll just want to note too that our um, ID numbers do start with the at symbol. So anytime you ever call an office or you're emailing somebody, we ask you for a student ID number. This is the number that we're talking about um, that we need. Again, here is our email address. Um, so first name, dot last name, four numbers at email.saracosa.edu. Um, and it just provides some important information in what the next step would be. Uh, one thing that I do want to note too, if your application, um, say if your name is familiar to somebody else, again, John Smith, if you have a birthday that might be similar, or um, if maybe you had an application back in 2003 and we still have you in the system, you may on this particular screen get a message that says that your application needs to be manually reviewed. Um, that doesn't mean that something's wrong with the application. It doesn't mean that you're in trouble or anything along those lines. It just means that an actual person has to review your application. So if you had an ID number, um, from 2003. At that point, we just have to merge your applications together. That way, we're not creating multiple ID numbers for you. Um, you know, if there's, again, we just want to make sure that that your student ID number is assigned to you. Um, you know, if your if your birthday matches another person, we just want to make sure um, that everything's good to go. Like I said, it doesn't mean that you're in trouble or you did your application wrong. It just means it has to be reviewed. Typically, um, now our office, we actually go through those applications uh, multiple times a day. So in the notice, it will tell you, you know, give us three days. Most of the time, you'll start getting emails within the same day or within 24 hours. Um, we try to give ourselves a little bit more time if we're impacted or if we're um, closed for the holidays or something along those lines. Um, so just, you know, just make note that if it, your application has to be reviewed, um, one of our technicians will be contacting you through your email. Um, if we need to verify information, again, we'll email you um, with any verification that we have. And then we'll just come right back over to our email. Um, so again, you'll start getting emails from KCCD, our current community college district, um, that will also contain your student ID number, as well as your email address here as well. Um, and just kind of some important information, what's next. Um, if you have questions, um, our admissions contact information is here. If you wanna call and make an appointment with a counselor, our counseling department's information is there. Um, or if you need more help, we have financial aid, um, all that information just in this email. Um, so that's something that you'll want to um, take note of. So there's that. There is the application. Um, now I think at this point we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. I think, Kim, you have all the questions? Let me see if I can go into the chat here. I think I've been pretty well at answering uh, the questions that have been coming in through chat, but while we wait for you guys to maybe think of some, um, on Thursday, April 2nd at 11 a.m., we're actually going to be hosting a registration workshop 
Um, so if you need assistance registering for the summer and the fall courses, uh, we will have an educational advisor handy um, and we could walk you through that process. Um, that does not take uh, in lieu of what we can do for you and, and host and have a uh, phone appointment or even a Zoom meeting, um, but feel free to contact the counseling department if you'd like to schedule that appointment. Perfect. Um, so if any, like I said, if anybody has any questions, um, I know in the chat box, it looks like um, all of our offices, um, thank you Fabian and, and Kim um, for providing contact information for our departments. Um, if you ever, you know, if you have questions after this is over, um, you can also find all of our contact information on the website. When you go to the website, you can actually either search by directory. Um, if you know you need to contact admissions and records or financial aid, um, you can actually access our departments and we are listed. Um, we also have, if the departments have an email address, you can also send everybody emails, um, especially since most of us are working remotely right now. Um, so please feel free to, to contact us with any questions that you might have. Um, and definitely just take a look at the website. We have, there's a lot of information. You know, if you have questions about financial aid um, under admissions and records, there's actually a financial aid um, web page that talks about the Pell Grants, the fee waivers, scholarships, um, and of course all of our financial aid technicians are ready to assist you with any questions you might have. If you would like to set up um, an appointment with them, you're definitely welcome to do so. Um, one of the other things, again, like I said, there's all this information here. Um, one of the other things I want to touch on too is the Saracosa Promise. Um, this is just some additional information. It's a scholarship um, for students that isn't necessarily need-based. Um, there's different criteria for this particular scholarship. Um, so if you have questions about the Promise Scholarship, we do have a web page here. Um, it tells you, you know, what your eligibility requirements are, how to apply. Um, there's a new student checklist, some frequently asked questions. Um, if you have additional questions, um, we actually have our staff down here at the bottom that can answer questions that you might have about the Promise um, Scholarship as well. Um, okay, so someone had a question for the education high school transcript portion. It asks for the grade I received. If I am still enrolled in that class, should I use last semester's grade or select none of the above? Um, so if you're in the application, you could either use last semester's grade or the grade you currently have um, in that class. So I hope that answers that question. Yes, that, that works fine. And then eventually once you graduate high school and you are able to submit your high school transcript, then the final grade would be posted there. But um, as of now, answer it to the best of your ability. Um, yes, thank you. Um, so again, just if you guys have any questions, please let us know. Um, Fabian or any other staff, is there anything else that you guys would like to share? So at the end of the application, it asks you that the next step would be to contact the counseling department or complete an online orientation. So if you go back on the main website, um, it says admissions and records, and then our orientation. So you could click on it from there or from your email that you're gonna receive. Um, if you uh, completed an orientation in a prior semester, or we at attended uh, your high school and completed an in-person orientation, then just give us a call so we can note that. But for the meantime, while we wait for the next uh, orientation or the next registration workshop on Thursday, I would encourage you all to take some time to complete the online orientation, which is one of the pieces needed um, regarding priority registration, among other things. But um, take care of that if you have some time. Perfect. And if, does anybody else have any other questions that we can answer? Okay. 
One question I got um, from a student was regarding issues with Internet Explorer. Um, so I noted if to try to use Chrome or Firefox when you're submitting a college application. Yes. Sometimes with Internet Explorer, it gives us a little bit of a issue when it's loading the data. Um, if you need assistance, uh, feel free to give us a call. Yes, definitely. Uh, Internet Explorer, and if you're using Apple product, um, if you're using Safari, Safari can give some issues as well. We definitely suggest utilizing uh, Google Chrome um, or Mozilla Firefox um, for anything that you're doing with the college. Our servers and systems just like those browsers better. Um, And then to thank you, Kim, too. Um, so just a quick uh, shout out. So Thursday, um, April 2nd at 11 o'clock, um, our wonderful staff is hosting a registration workshop. So if you're, you know, now that you've done the application, if you're not sure how to register for classes, um, they're actually going through the registration process um, and the steps. Um, it is via Zoom. So that way uh, you guys can log in. Um, ask questions or anything along those lines. Um, definitely keep an eye out on all of our social media pages um, as they're going to be sharing that out. Um, come back onto the website, you'll be able to see that information there. Um, that way we can get you guys all set up and ready to go for summer and fall. Well, thank you so much, Jess. If we have any other questions? No? Okay. So just look out for the main website, uh, the updates regarding Thursday's meeting, and if we need, these recordings will also be housed in our main website. Um, so just look out for those as well. And thank you again so much for all of you for joining us today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, stay safe, wash your hands, and uh, hopefully we'll see you this summer in the fall. Take care. Bye, everybody.